don't like a restaurant. <laughs> well, you came to the right place because you're going to be fed this morning. Amen. 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 Well, we want to welcome all of you to the house of God. Amen. Oh, this, yeah. we're here. What is your name, brother? G.W. White. G.W. White. And Cecilia. And Cecilia. Amen. God, well, welcome. 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 Amen. We want to thank all of you. And Hannah's here, too. Amen. Hey. Welcome. Amen. Good to see you, Amen. But I want to open up with this statement, and I want to say this to all of you. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and you're ordering something, and all of a sudden, after you order, the first thing that comes out of their mouth, they says, do you want to supersize it? <laughs> no, do you want to supersize it? Well, that's the title of my message this morning. Amen. Supersize it. But see, there, there's something about when they ask you if you want to supersize it, because there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay to get a little bit more. Yeah. It's going to cost right. you something, yeah. but you're going to get a little bit more. Yeah. Right. Amen? Yeah. You're going to get a larger drink instead of a small drink. You're going to get a big bag of fries instead of a, a small bag. And you're going to get a double cheeseburger instead of a single burger. <laughs> but through all this, people, it's going to cost you something. I hope you guys are picking up on this. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because in order for you to be supersized, yeah. it's going to cost you something to get to the next level in life. Yeah. Amen. Because from time to time, as I read this teaching here this morning, and I thank God that he gave it to me the way he did. Because sometimes we don't seem to understand that God is trying to take us to the next level. But are you ready to be supersized? Because it's going to cost you something. Amen. It may cost you to get back into a little bit of prayer, fasting, being obedient, Trusting in God and putting your faith in God. But are you ready to be supersized? Tell somebody, are you ready to be supersized? Are you ready to be supersized? Are you getting ready to get to the next level in life? Because God has so many promises for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. But see, but when you do get supersized, people, it begins to take you up where? To another elevation in life. You want to be elevated. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because elevation to me means that you're going to be raised up to the Amen. next level. Yes. Amen. Are you ready to go to a higher place? Yes. Yes. Not only in life, but also in the things of God. Yes. Yes. It's like tell you, I tell you guys from time to time, I want to get more into His Word. I want to read more of His Word. I want to get revelation of His Word. But if I stay where I'm at, I'm never going to get to that place no, where God right. wants me to be. Right. So it's going to cost me something. To get to the next level, people, it's going to cost me more time, more sacrifices on my part to get into his word, to read his word, first for myself. I got to get, I got to get elevated within my walk as a man, as a husband, as a father, a <laughs> grandfather, and the pastor of this church. I don't want to stay where I'm at. I don't even want to think about procrastinating. Because you, if you sit there long enough, that's what's going to happen. You're going to procrastinate about the places where God wants to take you to, but you're never going to get there. Because all you're doing is just thinking about it. I don't know about you people, but I know that I want to get to the next, le next level in life. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And I'm going to show you through Scripture how men and even women of God got to that level where God wanted them to. Because, see, I don't believe that God wants to keep you where you're at. I believe that God wants to raise you up. But the thing is that too many people are holding back from being used by God. Amen? Too many people are afraid. Too many people think that you don't have enough education or enough degrees on that wall. You don't need a degree to preach the Word of God, people. All you need is the leading of the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is truly in you, Yes. If you start praying and believing that you yes. want to get to another place in life with God and with people and your family and the church, I tell you what, God's going to reward you. Amen. But the first thing he's going to be looking at is your heart. Yes. Mm. Are you ready to get to the next level? Amen. That's right. No, are you ready to get to the next level in life? Yes. Because a lot of people say that they are. But when it comes for the rubber to meet the road, oh, yeah. nobody's there. Oh, yeah. That's right. 
Right. All of a sudden, people just begin to walk away. Well, mm -hmm. I don't think I can handle this. I don't mm -hmm. think I can do That's this. Right. And I don't think I can do that. That's right. Amen. Yes, you can do because the word says that we can do all okay. things. Through Christ. You just got to know what you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. Right. You can do all things in life because you're limited. Amen. But I wanna, but I wanna, I wanna share these these scriptures with all of you, Amen. Before I give you a description of how many men and women God used about being at the right place at the right time, and not even knowing that God was gonna elevate you to the next place or supersize you, Amen. Turn over to the book of Genesis, chapter five, Amen. I tell you what, God began to show me so many things about this teaching, and I sat there, and I, and, and I just started thinking about my own personal life. And as I see this, and I read this, and you guys get to hear this, you guys are going to start looking at your own personal life. Where is it that you want to be in life right now? No, seriously, especially in the things of God. Where is it that you want to be? Do you want to teach? Do you want to preach? Do you want to evangelize? Do you want to prophesy? Amen? See, God's not going to bring you to that place in your life unless He knows that you're ready. That's right. Because a lot of people try to get ahead of God, That's right. and all they do is fail. Mm -hmm. They get halfway there, and they give up because they don't see nothing happening. So they turn around, and they go back. Amen? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Genesis chapter 5, starting in verse 23. I, I, I love the way God gave me this. He says, So in all the days of Enoch, for 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that, people. Now, <coughs> re just remember what I just said, okay? Now go over to the book of Hebrews. Amen? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, starting in verse 5. Hebrews 11, verse 5, he says, By faith, <clears throat> no, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. Can you imagine people not dying here on this earth and God taking you away? Amen? We, don't, we can't even begin to imagine that because for the most part as humans, when somebody dies, all we do is bury them. When somebody dies, all we do is what? Cremate them. Amen? No matter how they die. There's only two ways that you're going to get buried. Amen? You're going to go into the ground and you're going to get cremated. Amen? But Enoch was taken. Oh my God, people. To have that kind, to have that kind of, 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 of I, I don't even know how to explain it. To have that kind of favor with God. Oh yeah, that's it, Lord. Thank you. Mm -hmm. To have that kind of favor with God that he's not even going to allow you to see death because he's going to take you. And I'm going to tell you why he took him. Okay? By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found. And here it comes, people. Because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he did what? That he pleased God. Oh my God. You know what it takes to please God to be taken away this way? To be taken away? Can you imagine if I was just standing here right now and the Lord took me and you witnessed that? Wow. That's beyond. It's beyond our imagination. But this is what happened with Enoch. See, Enoch was elevated to a higher place. He was raised up and he never even experienced death. Why? Because he pleased God. What does it take to please God? Obedience. Thank you. It's your obedience. Not when you feel like it. Not when you want a blessing from God. Not when you got not when you want God to heal you physically, mentally, spiritually, or not when you want your a financial breakthrough. You don't do these things just to please God. You do it because this is your lifestyle now. Amen. Amen. We're supposed to be pleasing God at all times. We're supposed to be pleasing one another. We're supposed to be pleasing 
each and every one when it comes to that point in our lives, people. But see, you stop and think, why don't these things happen the way they should? Because maybe we're just not pleasing God. Maybe God's not ready to take you to the next level in life because you're still holding on to yesterday? Are you still holding on to your offenses? Are you still holding on to all that bitterness and all that hurt and the pain and the division and the strife and all the hurt that people brought upon you? Well, what about the hurt that you put on? Do you think you're that perfect? Because if you were pleasing God, you sure wouldn't be in this place. And maybe God brought you to this place so you could hear this teaching so we can start learning how to please God. Amen. So we can start learning how to please one another. It's not that hard to please one another. What does it take to please someone? Your love. Your joy. Your peace. Your kindness. Your mercy. My God, we, 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 need, to touch, we need to start trusting one another more so. Men and women who are married, husbands and wives, my God, the last thing you want to do is mistrust your mate. We should be trusting one another in everything. Amen. I don't hide nothing from my wife. I don't hide nothing from her. I don't lie to my wife. Why? And she doesn't do that to me either. Amen. Why? Because we've learned how to trust one another. We have a great time of communication. We love each other. We've been together for 49 years, people. That must be, we must be doing something right. Amen. 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 It's not always peaches and cream, people. Oh, no. Amen. But for the most part, oh my God, we're there to please one another. Amen. 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 And we have a good time with one another. We talk a lot. We communicate with one another. And that is one of the biggest issues that people have, that when communication is broken down, there goes the marriage. There goes the relationship. There goes everything. Whether you're married or not, it doesn't matter. The thing is that we're going to have to start learning how to pre please God in everything with our life. And you know where it starts? It starts with you. It doesn't start with your husband. It doesn't start with your wife. It doesn't start in church. It starts with you. So I don't know how, what and what you want from God. But all I know that I want more than what God is giving me right now. Not because I'm greedy. Because I want to do more for God. And if I continue to please Him in every way that I can, and do the best that I can. I'm not perfect. Well, neither are you. That's right. But I tell you what, I'm going to try to do the best that I can for the things of God because I want to please the Lord. Amen. And when He sees that you're really trying, and when He sees that you're truly pleasing Him, people... You have no clue what's about to happen in your life. Those things that you've been praying for, those people that you've been praying for, maybe you're praying for your marriage. I don't know. Maybe you're praying for your finances. I don't know. Maybe you're praying for direction. I don't know. I don't know what you're praying for. But I tell you what, if you start pleasing God the way you should be, I'm going to tell you something. He's going to start to guide, lead, and direct Amen. you in Amen. the way that you should go. Amen. Amen. He told Joshua one thing, look, whatever you do, whatever you do, Joshua, don't look to the left or to the right. right. Guess yeah. what? He pleased the Lord. And look at everything that Joshua went through. Amen? So as we look at this scripture, and I'm going to read it again. Because I want you guys to get this buried in your hearts. He says, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. And was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. Oh my God, people. And again in verse 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Amen. You're going to need more faith, people, than you ever thought of to please God. Look, you're going to have to do away with your stinky thinking. Seriously, people. Seriously, it's time to grow up. Look, look, at, look, look how old you are. How long have you been serving the Lord by now? Look, I've been serving the Lord for almost 35 years. I've been trying to please God as much as I can. And look where he's brought us to. From the very first day that I became a Christian, from the very first day that I accepted Jesus Christ in, in my heart, I had no clue, Brother Joe, that God was going to bring me behind a pulpit. I was up to no good. 
I was partying. I was nightclubbing. I was smoking weed and other things. I mean, I used to leave my wife at home with my kids when they were young. And all I wanted to do was, I just wanted to be a party animal. And all of a sudden, one day, the Lord got a hold of me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, people. And when he made himself real to me, look, I'm not just talking about just reading a word. I'm talking about revelation. That's right. Amen. I'm talking about the visions that he showed me became real in my life. I would think something and they would come to pass. I would pray about something and God would answer prayer. Amen. And I couldn't hold back. I said, my God, God is real here. Because nobody could have done this but God. Amen. I right. would never share my prayers with nobody because I was too embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to pray. Hey, to read a book, I said, start local. <laughs> <laughs> to read a book? Man, it, I, I couldn't even sit down and read one page. And now I'm reading the entire word. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when you start pleasing God, and this becomes your testimony, He's going to start doing more things in your life that you could ever imagine. Ooh, come on. I'm telling you, I'm a living testimony of what God has done in my life. I remember the first time I walked into a Christian church. I sat in the back row. And the tithing bucket came by. And I was looking in my front pockets to see how much change I had. I didn't pull out my wallet and start throwing dollar bills. Hell, oh no way, I ain't gonna give nothing to this church. Did you see the pastor's car out there? No. <laughs> Seriously, I was a rebellious Christian when I first started. And I used to sit in the back row, and I made my wife sit in the back row, and I made my three sons sit in the back row, and I said, and when the service is over, we're walking out of here, and we're not going to greet nobody and talk to nobody. I don't want to fellowship with nobody. Come on, let's go and eat. <laughs> and look what the Lord has done. Yeah. 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 Let me give you a testimony, just like Enoch, because, because of what he has done in my life, Okay. I remember going into that first Christian church, sitting in the back row. You know that years later, he brought me back to that church 15 years later, and I was standing behind that pulpit and giving a word. Wow. Wow. 15 years later. That's a testimony, people. Yeah. But you know what? I started learning how to please God. I started learning, look, Lord, I don't, you know, I didn't know what Christianity was all about. The hallelujahs and people were going dancing and <laughs> speaking in tongues and all this. Man, man, these people are crazy. <laughs> Seriously, people, I'm giving you my testimony. See, because Enoch too had a testimony. Think about what Enoch must have done every single day of his life, people. To wake up in the morning to please God and to worship Him and to pray to the Lord and, and, and to give thanks to God for everything. And there was so much confusion going around in those days. There's, there's turmoil and sexual immorality was going on and all this stuff was going on. But there was only one man that God saw that was pleasing Him. Amen. And He took him out of, from all that mess. Amen. 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 So see, God can't take you out of your mess. Amen. If you choose to please him. Amen. 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 I got more to say, but I don't want to share my testimony no more. <laughs> Amen. One of these days, we're going to have testimony night Amen. or testimony service. Uh, well, we're going to be able to give people a chance to give their testimonies so that they come in and see what God has done in their lives. Amen. 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 Because it's good to see and hear what other people have gone through. Amen. 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 Look at all the issues that these people went through in this book. Right. We're no better and bigger than they are. We're just as human as we are. Right. You think that they didn't hear from God the way we hear from God now? Well, Pastor Bob, how come miracles, signs, and wonders don't happen the way they do? Well, maybe we're just not pleasing God the way we should. Thank you, Father. Verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe. That's the key word, people. We must believe that he is, and that he is what? That he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. In other words, people, that you're going to follow through that. No matter what you hear, no matter what you're going through in life, 
I don't care if you have your backs up against the wall. You know what? You're going to continue to seek him diligently. That means that you're going to follow through and you're not going to give up on what God is saying to do. Look, we're not in control of our lives no more. If we live by God's word, he's in control. There's no better person that I want to work for. It's for God. Amen. There's no better other person that I want to listen to. <clears throat> yeah, I have to listen to my wife. I have to listen to some of the people in here. I have to listen to some other people outside of this church. But I tell you what, I want to listen to what God has to say Amen. first. Amen. 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 Because if we seek Him diligently, oh, oh my God, people, the rewards that God has in store <clears throat> for each and every one of us right now, you have no clue what God has in store for you. But the thing is that we're holding back. We're holding back. We're holding back. We're still, we're still holding on to those things. Those things. Those things. Let them go. They're just things. They're messing up. They're messing you up. What's it going to take to get to that place? No, what, seriously, people. What's it going to take to get to that place where we're going to be able to please God? No, riace lo que está pasando. It doesn't matter what's going on over here. Your, your job is to please God in all that you can. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Again, go over to uh, Hebrews 11, verse 8. Look at what it says down a little bit down. It says, By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place where he would not receive, where, where he would receive an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going, by faith he dwelled in the land of promise and in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, their heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, who builder and maker is God. Look, when, a when God came and spoke to Abraham, he just saw Abraham. He says, get away from your father, get away from your mother, and get away from your country. I am taking you to a place that you don't even know of. You know why? Because God was getting ready to elevate him. God was getting ready to raise him up to another standard in life. And guess what? Abraham had no clue of where he was going. But because of his faith and because of his obedience, he was willing to please God that no matter what it took, he was going to leave everything behind. you got to remember something. The reason God pulled him out because he saw his heart. Oh, come on, people. Amen. He saw his heart and he pulled him out. you got to remember his father. And the, one of the reasons that when Abraham told his servant, Eleazar, to go and look for a wife, whatever you do, he says, don't take my son back there. You know why? Because his father, Terah, used to worship idols. And that's why he pulled Abraham away from his family. Because he knew that he could do something with Abraham. Oh, come on, you guys. Amen. He knew that he could do something with Abraham. Amen. Now, if he can do something with him, he can do something with you. Uh, it's like me. He pulled me out of Tucson. He says, get away from your family. Get away from all this mess, from all the drugs and all the bar, everything that you were doing. I'm going to take you to a new place. A place that you don't even know of. And I'm going to start raising. I had no clue, you guys. I had no clue of what he was about to do with us. But because we were, you had no clue of what it took for us to get here. The struggles that we went through. Mentally, yes, and even physically, yes, and even financially a little bit. But you know what? God began to shift things around for us. Oh, my God, people. He started putting us in a place. He started blessing us financially. Man, the, what I was making over there, I doubled over here. Seriously, and, and even when I got here, my boss was trying to rip me off. And God said, no way. Let me tell you this, okay? Let me tell you how what happens when you start pleasing God. I was making 10 25 an hour over there. When I got here, they told me that I was going to be making 23 bucks an hour. But I was going to have to go to school because I went from a welder to an electrician. 
That's like day and night, people. Do you know how much disgusted and depressed I was? Huh? I was a good welder by trade. I had my own business back in Tucson. But all of a sudden, the Lord began to change things in our lives. Oh my God, people, he began to change some things in our lives. And he brought us over here to a foreign land. <laughs> what the heck am I doing here in California? Look at all these freeways. We only have one freeway in Tucson. I got lost. We got lost. My wife still doesn't drive the freeways after 34 years. Amen. Seriously, and, 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 and things went like this and like this. He says, but I'm taking you. Oh my God, people, when God says that, I'm taking you to a new place. Because now I know what I can do with you here. I need you to, I, I want to raise you up, but I can't raise you up over here. you got to let go of all the idols. you not, you got to, you got to quit worshiping all these things because I'm going to bring you to a new place. Amen. And he brought us to a new place. Oh. And oh my God, man, my, my weight just doubled. And we started doing things and, and, and God began, oh my God, God began, became so real in my life, you guys. And I started seeing his goodness. Man, when you start seeing somebody being good to you, don't you want to please them? Amen. Yes. How many people here have a good boss that you're willing to do all that you can for them? Jesus. <laughs> Be expecting no. something good to happen. Amen. You just keep being that faithful servant. Amen. Seriously, people. You start pleasing those people that sign your paycheck. You see, you think that your boss doesn't see what you're doing? Huh? You think that your boss doesn't know? Oh, they know, people. I know. I've had businesses. I know the people that work for me. I know when and where, how to give and not to give. I know when to fire people. And I know when to hire people. Amen? And when you know that you know that you know, oh my God, people, you're going to know a lot of stuff. <coughs> Amen? Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Go over to the book of 2 Kings. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Amen. Amen. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2. chapter 2 <clears throat> starting in verse 8 now Elijah took his mantle rolled it up and struck the water and it was divided this way and that way so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground this is Elijah and it was so that when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha he says ask just one thing just ask mm -hmm. he says look he wasn't asking for silver and gold and riches yeah he says, what may I do for you, he says, before I am taken away from you? What can I do for you? Amen. Amen. Then Elijah says, please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Amen. Guess what, people? He was getting ready to be supersized. Amen. <laughs> He was getting ready to be supersized. Mm -hmm. You have one thing, but I'm going to double it. Amen. I hope you guys are picking up on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He says, please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. you got to remember something about Elijah, people. Elijah was a farmer by trade. One day, Elijah was passing by, and he saw him farming. The Word of God says that he took his mantle and he threw it. And when he threw it, I hope you guys have picked up it. It fell on Elisha. Mm. And as soon as the mantle fell on him, the anointing came on him. Amen. That was his first portion. Amen. Amen. So what did Elisha do? He took all his belongings, his livelihood. He took the ox and he sacrificed it. He took 
his utensils and his tools that he used to make a living with. He took all the wood and started a fire and he burned that ox and he invited everyone and he shared with everyone that he had and he followed the man of God. He was willing to give up everything to do what? To please the man of God. Amen? I needed to share that so you guys don't know why he was asking for a double portion. Amen. He says, please. He says, please. That's an act of kindness right there, people. Amen. He says, please let a double portion of your spirit fall upon me. So he says, nevertheless, if you see, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. He says, then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with forces of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it and he cried out, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horsemen. So he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes, tore them into pieces. But he also took off the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him, and he went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Look at the first miracle that he performs, people. Then he took the mantle from Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and says, Where is the, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also struck the water, it was divided this way and that way, and Elijah crossed over. Oh my God, people, to have the anointing to have that kind of portion be put upon you, to know how oh, it, it, we can't even begin to comprehend this, people. Yeah. That a mantle, it's not the mantle, people, it's the anointing yeah. on the mantle yeah. that was creating all these miracles. Yeah. And this wasn't the only miracle that Elisha performed. He did so many other things besides all this, people. But you know why? Because Elijah was willing to please the man Amen. of God. Amen. Amen. So he was what? He was supersized. He was given a double portion. Instead of a single cheeseburger, he got a double cheeseburger. <laughs> with grilled onion. And a little bit of tapatio on it. Amen. He got a little spice into it. Amen. So I'm telling you what, people. There's so many things here that we can look at. And begin to look at this. Look, turn over to the book of, of Isaiah. I love this, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this teaching. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, starting in verse 1. Amen. Isaiah 6, verse 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, he says, I saw the Lord sitting. you got to remember something. Isaiah wasn't a prophet yet. God was giving him a vision. Oh, come on, people. See, he was setting him up. Amen. He says, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple, and above it it stood seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. Then one cried out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door where, where it was shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke. So he says, woe is me. This is Isaiah speaking now. He's seen this great vision right before him. You know what he was seeing? He was seeing heaven, people. God opened up the heavens and he gave him a vision of heaven. What would you do? He says, this is Isaiah confessing now. Thank you, Father. He's confessing. He says, woe is me, for I am undone. In other words, people, another version of that says that he was being destroyed. And I'm going to tell you why he was being destroyed. He says, because I am a man of unclean lips. He wasn't a prophet yet. Mm -hmm. But God had to show this man a vision of heaven in order for him to get to that place, yeah. in order for God to use him in the way that God used Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
He says, because I am a man of unclean lips. Guess what, people? We've all been there. Yeah, yeah. No, we've all been there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, people, we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. When was the last time? Oh, I'm not going there then. <laughs> <laughs> because there is a lot of cursing Christians. Wow. Cussing Christians. They love to cuss. Just to get their point across. Mm -hmm. Why? Because your anger and your bitterness yeah. and you're just mm -hmm. tired and sick and tired of what you're seeing and hearing. And you want to please God? Mm -hmm. And you want to get to the next level? Mm -hmm. But God hears and sees yes, all? Amen? Amen? I'm speaking the truth in love. Yes. 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 <laughs> you came to a church where the truth is spoken, people. Amen. But we're going to speak it to you in love. Amen. Because I want you to be set free. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell, listen to me, people, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Mm. Mm. The whole barrio. <laughs> was up to no good. The whole body was doing whatever they wanted to. Yeah. The whole body was committing sexual immorality. Yeah. The whole body was drinking and partying. They were doing anything and everything. Why? Because they had unclean lips. Mm -hmm. And he was living among mm -hmm. unclean people. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. He says, For my eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do, people, if God gives you a vision of heaven? What are you going to do if he just gives you... What if you're just thinking about something that has to do with God in your life and all of a sudden God shows you this picture? Have you ever heard... Oh, we always hear, well, the Lord just showed me. Really? Did the Lord really show you this? Is the Lord really speaking to you? Did the Lord really show you this? Look, don't be so quick to say, thus says the Lord. If it ain't God, and if God's not showing you this, then keep your mouth shut. Amen. Amen. Seriously. Because all you're going to do is get yourself in trouble. Yes. Not with the people. Right. With God. Amen. 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 Because if the Lord ain't showing you, you ain't seeing nothing. Amen. 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 He says, And I dwell in the midst of people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He's testifying of what he had just seen, people. Amen. Amen. He says, Then one of the seraphims flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with, his to with the tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth, and he says, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin has been purged. You have been atoned. You have been anointed <clears throat> because now you've come in right before me and you're making confession that you said that you were a man with unclean lips. Now I can use you. Amen. Now I can use you. Oh man, people, to be used by God, yes. when he sees that you know, that he knows that you know, that now you're in line with my word. Now I can use you. Now I can raise you up to the next level. Now I can supersize you. Amen. Now I can give you a double portion. Now I can. No, now I can. Amen. Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord say, not only did he see, but he also heard his voice. Amen. And this is God speaking. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And here's Isaiah. Then he says, Here am I. Send me. That's your confession, people. Are you ready to be sent from God? To go the, and do the will of God? To speak his word in season and out of season? 
and not to be afraid of people to let them know who this great God is. Amen. Amen. And not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look, whatever you do, don't get wrapped up with people at work when they start talking about all this mess and what did you do this weekend? Oh, you can't believe how much. You can't believe, man, I, man, I met this one chick at the nightclub. You know what? Don't even entertain that thought. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Because that's going backwards. Mm -hmm. yep. You're hearing something that you're used to do. Why don't you tell them what you did this weekend? Come on now. Yeah. Why, did you, why don't you go and tell them that you can't believe? Let them speak their mess. Yeah. And then turn around and bless them with the word. Ooh. It says, you know what I did this weekend? We uh. went to church. We had a good old time. We were praising God. We were worshiping. The word of prophecy came forth. People were getting slain in the spirit. And, and, and the word that came forth. And all of a sudden, you're going to know they want to hear what you've got to say. Amen. Amen. If they walk away, then you walk away. Mm. Because they're all they're going to come and tell you all this mess. And whatever you do, don't stand there and listen to their stupid, idiotic, dirty jokes. That's right. That's right. You've been forgiven. Your lips have been purged. Right? No, your lips have been purged, right? Yes. So don't give in to their mess. Amen? Amen. He says, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And he says, here am I. He says, send me. And he says, go and tell these people. No, go and tell the people. He says, look, you keep on hearing, but you don't understand. You keep on seeing, but you don't perceive. He says, make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return, and what? And be healed. Mm -hmm. You know that you can bring healing to people by the way you act, by the way you conduct yourself, by the way you speak, by the way you, you, you walk, just your walk alone, people. Amen. Let the fruits of the Spirit come out of you. <coughs> Man, hey, well, yeah, I, I, every time I go back home to Tucson, and every so often I'll meet up with someone that I haven't seen in years, they still look at me and they think that I'm still the same. Oh, no, until they start hearing me speak. Amen. Because I'm not afraid to talk to them anymore. And then, then I said, orale, mami, he said, me, me, me dijeron que eres todo religión. Te poniste todo religioso. Oh, I'm going to share all this to, the, to all the bilingual people. He says, hey, Bob, he says, I, sometimes I go back home and I run across some friends that I haven't seen in years. He says, hey, Bob, he says, uh, I heard that you're all religious. <laughs> I heard that you're being, are, are you a preacher now? I said, yes, I am. I said, let me tell you about the Jesus that I know, my brother. Amen. Oh, my God, I remember going to a funeral, one of my best friend's funeral. And they were all there, you know, we were all there in, in, in the funeral home and in the service and everything. And I walk in and I start greeting my old buddies from the railroad and we're all talking and stuff. And all of a sudden there was a bar across the street from the funeral home. He says, orale va. He says, let's go. I says, where? To the bar. He says, let's go have a few beers. He says, I don't do that no more, brother. Mm -hmm. You what? Ya no pisteas. <laughs> no, I don't drink no more. <laughs> I don't drink no more. Why? He says, because I've got a relationship with Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. 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 And I tell you what. One by one by one, they all left me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and here I am looking at my dead friend in yes, his car. Right. Wow. Right. And they all left me. Mm -hmm. There was about six or eight of them. Wow. And we were all tight because we used to go to the bars together, wow. especially on paydays. <laughs> the bar was down the street from the railroad. And we used to party there. And, and now, they all went across there. I can imagine what they were saying about me. Mm -hmm. You know what? I didn't care because yeah, my lips were clean. Amen. 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 And Amen. the Lord had purged me. Amen. And this is why I'm saying, right. when you begin to stand up for the things of God and you let them know who you are, yes. God is going to start raising you up. Amen. You know what? Little by little yes. by little Amen. by little. Amen. And don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed oh. to stand oh. there and confess who you are. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the next level? Yes. Are you ready to be supersized? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Turn over to the book of Jeremiah. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1. Amen. Thank you, 
Father. Jeremiah 1, 1, he says, uh, verse 4, he says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Hallelujah. Whew. You think that God doesn't know even when you're in the womb of who you're going to be when you come out? Amen. Amen. He says, before I, before I formed you, it says, in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Hallelujah. Oh my God, people. God was already had. He had a plan for you and he was setting you apart Amen. to do his will. He says, I ordained you as a prophet to the nation. Then I said, this is Jeremiah speaking. He says, oh Lord, behold, he says, I cannot speak for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say that I am a youth. Listen to me, you guys. Don't limit yourself into who you are right now. Because you don't have no clue of what God is about to do with you. You have no clue. Listen to me. You have no clue. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I'm a living testimony. There's other people in here, too, that are living testimonies of who you are. Look where you're at right now. Think about where you were at before you came to Christ. You think that God didn't know where you would be? Huh? Huh? On July 18th, 2017, of course, look, you're sitting in a church in downtown Ontario, listening to this crazy Mexican (laughs) that speaks the truth in love. Amen. Amen. He says, but the Lord said to me, do not say that I am a youth, for you shall go to whom all I send you. God, God knows where to send you. Like Brother Bob and Sister Louise, look, they gave a testimony here Wednesday night. They had no clue what was about to happen, but I bet you what, they were ready. Because we have to be ready in season and out of season. They walked into this place to go visit our brother that was sick. After just visiting one guy, you know how many people received the Lord? Fourteen people. Fourteen people from going to whom I will send you to. That's what God did with both of you Wednesday. When they came and gave us that testimony. Amen. So see, you don't know where God's going to send you. That's right, amen. You better be ready. Because God's going to test you. Amen. But I can tell you what, they please God. Amen. Fourteen people came to the Lord. Thank you, amen. He says, For do not say that I am a youth, for you shall go to whom I will send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. He says, Do not be afraid of their faces. Amen. You know how many people fear people because... They fear. Yeah. What are we afraid of? Mm-hmm. No, why are we afraid to speak to people about the things of God? Mm-hmm. No, why? Is there some kind of fear in us? It's just handsome. We're just people. You know, I remember I was doing a job in City Hall in L.A. And we were all coming out. We are going out to lunch. And the City of L.A. is busy at lunchtime. Mm-hmm. And we're walking out of City Hall. And we're all standing there right there. And we're getting ready to cross the street. And all of a sudden, at the time, here comes Mayor Bradley with his bodyguard. And he's standing right next to me to go across the street. And I got my buddies here. We're going to the restaurant. And I looked around like that. Mayor Bradley, how you doing, brother? (laughs) (laughs) He says, I'm doing fine there, young man. Really dressed sharp. I'm doing fine, young man. How you been? I'm doing good, brother. We're just doing work here in your building. He said, you guys are doing a good job. Thank you. We walked away. You shouldn't be afraid of people. I don't care who they are. Seriously, I always talk to people. If I'm standing next to someone, I sometimes I introduce myself. Sometimes I just start talking. I'm just a talker. Can you tell? (laughs) Thank you, Father. He says, Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord Look, I love this, look. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Again, here comes the touching of the mouth. By the Lord. He did that with Isaiah, and he's doing this with Jeremiah. He says, Behold, he says, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set, look, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms. To root out and 
to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. And moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah says, what do you say? He says, I see an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. And listen to me, you guys. Jeremiah was nobody. He was probably 12 or 14 years old at the time. A youth. He had no clue of what God was about to do in his life. But guess what? He elevated him. And he raised him up to be a prophet. Amen. Amen. See, because you don't know. See, you don't know when God is going to come and do something with you and through you. Don't ever limit yourself in the things, in the things that you're doing right now. You have no clue. There's probably apostles in this place right now. There's probably prophets and evangelists in here. There's probably pastors and preachers in here. I don't know, but I tell you what, if you get in line with the Word of God and you start pleasing and have enough faith to believe, something's going to happen. You may not be part of the fivefold ministry, but I tell you what, you're going to be doing more than what you're doing right now and just sitting there. Amen. 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 Right now, God is getting ready to elevate some people. Yeah. Oh my God, people. Yeah. Equila. I'm telling you, I was sitting in that back row in that first Christian church I walked into with a rebellious mind, not knowing, not, oh my God, people, not knowing that one day, boy, I would be right in the heart of Ontario standing behind a pulpit and preaching the Word of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Raise me up to that level, people. He's not done yet. I'm not done yet. Seriously, I'm not done yet. I want more from God. I want more for this ministry. This ministry is going to blow up, people, in a good way. Seriously, it is. I, I'm seeing the kind of people that God is bringing in here. You know why you're here? Because you're hungry. Right. And you're thirsty. Amen. And you're sick and tired of hearing everything else that's going on out there. Yes. Amen. Amen. You, you, want, you want someone to speak the truth into your life. Don't you want your life to change? Yes. Huh? Yes. Don't you want your households to change? Yes. Don't you want your sons and daughters yes. to become yes. who they are? Yes. Don't you want your sons and daughters yes. to honor their fathers and their mothers? Yes. Yes. Listen to me. God is going to make you guys an example of the Christ that is supposed to be in you. <coughs> Amen. Sometimes we're undone. Sometimes we're still thinking about yesterday. Let it go, people. That's right. Yeah. Let it go. Come on, it's not worth holding on to those nope. iniquities. What are you holding on to? Just in case you backslide? Just in case you have a way out with your camaradas? Oh, I knew you were going to come back. They're waiting at the street corner. I knew you were going to come back. In fact, you know what? We have this one joint that we roll for you and especially for you. Oh, wow. I knew you were going to come back. Oh, my God, people. I remember when they told me, people, when I was witnessing like crazy at work, they brought me into the office. And they says, you know what, Bobby? says, we heard that you've been preaching. I says, preaching? I'm not preaching. He says, no. He says, you need to stop doing what you're doing. What am I doing? He says, well, you, you've been talking about God too much at work. Hmm. I says, really? I says, I'm not doing it on your time. I'm doing it at a break time and my lunch time. He says, well, you know what? I think you better stop. I said, I'm not stopping for nobody. Not even for you. He says, you want to fire me? Go ahead and fire me. I'll get another job. God supplies. Amen. Amen. If you brought me this far, you think he's going to let me go? That's right. Huh? Amen. And do you know what that man told me? He says, you know what? He says, I give you five years. From five years from now, you're going to be drinking. You're going to be smoking your weed again. You're going to be bar hopping again. And you may not even be married to your wife. I said, you know what? In five years, brother, I'm going to be stronger than I've ever been. And I never look back. Got up, walked out of that office. I said, thank you, Jesus. Praising God all the way, all the way home. And I came back home and I told my wife that, are they crazy or what? Don't they know the God that we serve? But see, I was able, I was, I was willing to please God and to hold on to my testimony and to say, you know what, Lord? I know, I know that I know. Amen. And when you know that you know that you know people and you're not afraid to step up and do the things that God wants you to do, you think that God's not getting ready to lift you up and raise you up to the next level in life? 
Don't limit yourself where you're at, people. There's more. The Word of God tells us even in the book of Jeremiah. Look, the things I think towards you are thoughts of good things, right. of a good yeah. future and hope. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. There's yeah. something good that's going to happen to you Amen. if you choose to please God. Amen? Amen. Give me two more minutes. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You know what? I think about all these men. I did a little I did a little list right here so you can see what God did with these people. Look at Moses. He went from a shepherd to a leader, to a servant and a prophet. Look at Joshua and Caleb because they were faithful. Okay, come on. They were faithful servants. God gave them a promise. Caleb was believing for that mountain, and he took it at 80 years old. Amen. Joshua became one of the greatest warriors. Amen. He was elevated. And look what happened to him. Yeah. The whole entire congregation was given to him. Why? Yeah. Because he was faithful. Yeah. And he pleased God. Amen. Yeah. Look at Jacob. Oh my God. Jacob went from what? From a shepherd to a, a, to a betrayer. And he became the nation of Israel. Oh my God, people. Then Joseph, he went from the pit to the palace. Yeah. Why? Because he kept his faith yeah. in God and he pleased yeah. God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And then Gideon from all the people, the, the weakest of the clan, and his family yeah. being the weakest of all the people in there. Yeah. He went from, from, from pressing the, the graves and hiding himself yeah. from, the, from there, and he became a mighty man of valor. Yeah. Yeah. You think that God wasn't raising these people up? Huh? And, and then Esther, just being a common little Jew girl, beautiful girl, they said. Amen. He was waiting to, she was willing to wait on God. And for a whole year, she was being prepared for this, 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 and this. And all of a sudden, from being a nobody, she became a queen. Amen. 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 Look how wow. many queens are in here. Look how many men, mighty men of valor are in here. Amen. You guys have gifts in you that you don't even know of. Because you're never too old to be used by God. Right. You're never too young to be used by God either. Yeah. Amen. So don't limit yourself. Look at Ruth becoming a widow. Oh. Walking through the wilderness not knowing what was going to happen to her. And Naomi. And look what God did with Ruth. Her Boaz came. Amen. 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 And look how, look how prosperous she was. And she was out there gleaning. Picking up the leftovers. Yeah. And all of a sudden... She owns the whole field. Do you think that God didn't elevate Ruth either? Huh? Why? Because she says, your God will be my God. And God heard it. She wasn't ashamed. I says, wherever you go, I'll go. Wherever you sleep, I will eat. Oh my God. You see, it doesn't take much but obedience, people. And faith to please God. Thank you, Father. Yes. Oh, Lord, thank you, Father. And then Nehemiah. Oh, I love this one. Nehemiah. People of all people, the lowest in the kingdom, a cup barrier. They would bring the wine to him so he could taste it, so it wouldn't be poisoned, so he could give it to the king. And he was a cup barrier. Just a simple butler or a, a waiter in a restaurant. And all of a sudden, he became a great leader. He rebuilt the walls and the gates. And look what took place with him. Amen. He was elevated. From a cup yeah. here, up here. Yeah. See, you, got, you guys still have no clue when God's going to promote you. Yeah. You have no clue when God wants to raise you up. But then, yeah. <laughs> sitting there, just sitting there, thinking about all your dumb, ignorant problems. <laughs> Let him go. Look, you're holding on like this. That's why God can't bless you. Because you're not ready to receive. Open up your arms and receive something from God. Quit holding on. We got pacifiers in the nursery, right? We got pacifiers. We got any few pampers left over. And we got a few pampers left over. Seriously, people. We're going to have to let go of yesterday. We're going to have to let go of... of Man, you don't know how God's going to... What if somebody gets promoted? Ooh, come on. No, I, I heard Sister Julie got a bonus. She got... Yeah. Right? Yeah. See? Were you expecting that? No. Yeah. 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 You don't know how God's going to promote you. 
You don't know what God has in store for you, but I tell you what, He's got something in store for you, but it's going to be up to you to want to store it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. <laughs> then Daniel. Look at Daniel. Mm -hmm. You think that Daniel didn't get promoted? Mm -hmm. He got elevated. Why? Because God gave him a vision to interpret yeah. dreams. And he came and spoke to the king. Because you have done this and you gave me the interpretation, you'll be my third governor of this nation. Wow. And he was just a Jew. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Father. And then the twelve disciples, oh, de locos. <laughs> the dirty dozen. <laughs> yeah, they were the dirty dozen. Yeah. My God, look at, look at Peter. He was a rebel. He was a rebel. Amen. And Matthew, the tax collector, uh, greedy to the max, yeah. people. And look what God did with the 12 disciples. Uh, Man, they weren't just disciples. Oh, my God. Thank you, Father. Yeah. They became apostles. Yeah. And then Paul, of all people, when he was Saul, going out there and persecuting the church, condemning the church, and even putting people to death till God had to get him flat on his back. And he became one of the greatest apostles. Amen. Listen to me. God is getting ready to elevate some people. Amen. And if you don't get in line with God, Amen. if you don't get in line with his word, right. if you don't have enough faith to believe, don't you want to please the Lord? Yes. Huh? Yes. No, don't you want to please the Lord yes. in everything? Yes. Oh my God, I don't know about you people, but you know what? Let's stand up. Yes. I think it's a...